Hey there, and welcome to another screencast from the Coding Pad. My name is Mary. And in today's screencast, um, I intend to go way back to basics, all the way to the very basics um, of this web development stuff. And the main reason that I'm doing this is over the last few weeks, I've been getting emails and um, you know messages from people asking me, you know, I, I like your tutorials, they look great, I, I want to try them out, but I'm kind of confused. How do I install Drupal on my computer so that I can test it? How do I install ModX? How do I, how do, I do this? How do I make it work? I don't see any exe file to install. I, I'm not sure how to do this. Um, <coughs> and, and these questions, you know, I've tried to answer them by email as much as I can. Um, but they're great because it means that a lot of people are, are kind of, you know, a lot of beginners are kind of um, getting interested in learning to use content management systems and, and they're reaching out for information. And I think that that's a really great thing. And so my intention um, in this series of two or three screencasts is to kind of lower the barrier to entry um, and, and, and go back to basics and, and kind of cover some things that sort of take for granted when we do these tutorials. We, we sort of take for granted that people know what we mean by, you know, on your local host um, and or, you know, on your local development environment, you know, go ahead and create a database, create a user. We kind of just prattle on and on and don't realize that there's some people who um, are not that familiar with, with the lingo and, and with the technologies that we're using. So my intention is to sort of go back all the way to basics and kind of set a sort of foundation so that um, you know where to start um, and, and to pick up from other tutorials. Now, to work with PHP and, and, and with a lot of the scripts that we talk about in these tutorials, like uh, my C, um, I'm sorry, like ModX and, and Drupal and WordPress, um, to do that, you need an environment that supports PHP um, and that supports writing and running scripts that are written in PHP. And the most common stack that you will find um, to work with in, in to the creates the environments that you work with, whether it's on, on shared hosts or on your local environment, is three components, and that's a PHP, of course, Apache, and MySQL, which is the database uh, side of business. And there are two ways to get this set up on your local environment, on your computer, whether it's a Mac or a Windows computer. There are two ways to set this up. You can either do it the long way, which is to go to the Apache website, download that and install it, then go to the PHP website, download that and install it, and do the same thing with the MySQL website, download MySQL and install it, and then go through the process of configuring them to see and talk to each other. So that's one way to do it. And I recommend that once you get your feet wet and, and you're, you're getting into this stuff, I recommend that you try that at least once because it helps you... Um, really see how things are tied together on the back end and, and how these things really work. And it's, it's a great learning experience. But as a rank beginner, it, it can be a little discouraging and it can be a little off-putting to try and do all that. And so there are alternatives um, which are already pre-configured and, and set and ready to go. And again, the idea here is to lower the barrier to entry and, and to sort of take care of that first hump so that you, you can sort of proceed and start learning the stuff you want to learn. Now, if you're on Windows, you have several options. And one is WAMP server, which is Apache, um, MySQL, and PHP on Windows. Um, the other one is XAMP, which um, covers both. I mean, uh, you can use on Linux, on Windows, on Mac OS X, and on Solaris. And the third one is MAMP, which is exclusive for the Mac. Um, it's Mac, Apache, MySQL, PHP. So depending on your environment, um, these are your options. Now, I work on Windows. Um, I have Windows Vista running on my laptop. And so and my preference, my, my, you know, my stack of preference is WAMP server. I've used it for a long time. There are a lot of things I like about it. And so that's what I'm going to install and work with. And sort of um, this is what you'll see whenever I'm doing any tutorials using my local um, development environment. It will always be on WAMP server. All right, so the first step is to go to the WAMP server website, which is where we are right now, and you want to install the latest release, which is 2.0i. And so simply go to Downloads. And you can see that... Um, the current release um, has these versions, 2.2.1, one of Apache, 5.3 of PHP, and MySQL 5.1.36, and in addition, has 
PHP My Admin, which helps you in administering and, and, and just working with your databases as you'll see as we proceed. So first step is to click that link and to download YAMP server. I already have it downloaded. Um, I already have that downloaded, so I'm just going to cancel and go to my downloads folder. So right there, and I'm just going to click that to install. All right, next, I accept the agreement. Now, WAMP server likes to install itself in the very root of C, and, and some people change that to install in the My Programs folder, the Programs folder. I just like to leave it on the root of C, and that works really well with a lot of the default stuff that I do. Um, but, you know, it's your choice. But I, I recommend when you're starting out to just let it install in its default location. So I'm going to create a desktop icon, and I'm going to install. Now, while this is installing, I want to go back and, and just kind of talk about something for a minute. The current version of WAMP server comes with PHP 5.3, which is great. This is, I think, the latest version of PHP, and, it, and it, it includes a lot of things that are going to come into PHP 6, which is the next big release that we're waiting for. Um, and, and it's great to work with. The problem is that some of the scripts that we use, some of the scripts that we're playing with, haven't quite caught up to supporting PHP 5.3. And so you might find that you're trying to install scripts and you're getting a lot of errors. And I found that um, it's because a lot of these scripts are not supporting 5.3 um, at the moment. And so one of the things I really appreciate about WAMP server is it allows you to have several versions, say, of PHP installed at the same time. And you can switch back and forth between them, which is really great because it allows you to take advantage of the strengths um, of the new version of PHP and kind of bypass the fallbacks of scripts that don't support that version by rolling back to the older version when you're developing using those scripts. And so you can install add-ons to WAMP server that allow you to do that, which is really great. Um, so install is almost complete. Tells me that it wants to use five. Asks me if I want to use Firefox as the default browser. Yes, I'm not going to worry about the mail settings yet. And then finish. And that's it. Now, it's going to start up WAMP server. And if you see in the tray down here, you have a new icon. That's the WAMP server icon. If I click on that and I click on localhost, it opens the index page for WAMP server, which is really great. Um, and you can see it's running PHP version 5.3. And you have a link here that allows you to go into PHP My Admin to um, set up databases and, and all that stuff, and we're going to do that in the next installment in this beginner series. But before we conclude this screencast, I actually want to add, like I said, this comes by default with PHP version 5.3, and if you click down here, if you click on the icon, go to PHP, and go to version, you see it has 5.3. I want to get another version just to allow myself to go back and forth when working with scripts that don't necessarily support 5.3. So I'm going to go to add-ons, um, PHP. I'm going to scroll down here and I'm going to pick the version just before 5.3 and that's the last 5.2 version. And I'm going to download that. Again, I already have it downloaded just to kind of save time. If I come here, I already have that downloaded. So I'm going to run that. Now, ideally, I should have actually stopped WAMP server before I did this, but it's actually going to stop it itself, um, I believe. So install. And this is great because um, it kind of just gives you the flexibility, like I said, to take advantage of the features of the newer versions of PHP while you know, not having a lot of problems working with scripts that don't support those newer features. Okay, so that's done. If I now come back here, and I click on PHP version, you can see that I have two. I have 5.3 and I have 5.2.11, and I can switch back and forth between them. Now, because some of the stuff that I'm going to start working with actually requires the older version, I'm just going to set that as default and allow WAMP server to kind of reset itself. You can see it turns yellow, and then it turns back white, and we're ready to go. And if I go back and I refresh this, it still works great. And you can see now under PHP version, it's telling me that I'm running 5.2.11. So I hope that um, this screencast is helpful to some of you who are just beginning um, setting up your local development environment. Like I said, if you're on a Mac, 
you can go to MAMP and download that. You also have the choice of XAMP if you're on a Mac or you're on Windows and to set up your development stack. And the rest of the things that we do after this are going to be pretty much the same regardless of, of, of which of these three that you're using. And so we're going to go from there and we're going to learn how to set up databases and users and add databases to use, I mean, users to databases. And we're going to install some scripts just for practice to see how this works. So I hope that this screencast um, is helpful to you in getting started and look forward to seeing you the next time. Thank you.